And nobody wants bad things to happen to them. If that's the case, make a lot of dua. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يرد القضاء إلا الدعاء Nothing blocks bad things from happening. The predestined bad things from happening except a dua. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, لا يزال دعاء العبد or دعاء المؤمن والدعاء يعتلجان في السماء إلى يوم القيامة It will always be that the dua of a believer wrestles with tribulations in the sky until the day of judgment. What does that mean? It means you live your life while your dua has set a pick for the calamity. The calamity is coming down, your dua has set a pick. How do we understand this in terms of destiny? The answer is, is that it is happening, but you blocked it. The same thing, which destined to rain, it's destined to snow. Okay, I'll go inside. So the destiny of rain and snow didn't change, but the effect does change. That's the key here. The effect, I protected myself from it. So if your dua is strong, it's like you're in a house. If your dua is weak, it's like an umbrella. If you have no dua at all, except very basic dua, it's like a cap, almost no protection at all. You no dua at all, it's like being bareheaded in the rain. You're gonna get fully wet. So the prophets, this also connects to how people understand that the prophets were the most in receiving tribulations, yet they're also described as the most in peacefulness, serenity, and the goodness of their life. How is that the case? How are we supposed to make sense with this? So they're the greatest in tribulation, but they're because they're the greatest in dua, they're the greatest in the blockage of the pain of the tribulation. So the worst things happened to them. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had six kids, five died in his lifetime. He had four daughters, two boys. Only Fatima Zahra lived past him, and he was informed that she's going to die shortly after his death. He has two beautiful grandchildren, and he's informed they'll be killed. Imagine this. Imagine you being told that you have in your family, you have six kids. You have a very beloved son-in-law and cousin and really foster son. And you have two sons from him. That's nine total members of Ahl al-Bayt. And the Prophet وسلم, was informed of how they're going to die or he, or he, they died in his lifetime. Imagine this. That Sayyidina Ali is going to be killed. Al Hassan is killed. Al Hussein is killed. Fatima is going to die six months after. She's very young. She won't see her children. Imagine this. Imagine you're told your daughter will not live to see her children grow up and become men. How painful is that? How painful is it for Hassan and Hussein to know they're going to lose their mom? They lost their grandfather. Their father's going to be killed. Imagine knowing all this. What a calamity is this? People sometimes say, well, the Prophet was never blind. Well, the Prophet was never a paraplegic. Well, the Prophet never had this calamity or that calamity. He had a perfect body. And they said, what greater calamity than to know the fate of your family and not one of the nine closest to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived out a normal length life and died at the end of their life, a beautiful death on a bed surrounded with his family, not one of them. So imagine now the calamity of prophets. Yet, we also have hadith, the prophet only had 17 white hairs. Wouldn't you go gray if you had this knowledge? If one daughter died, another daughter died, a third daughter died, one son died, a second daughter sec son died, and they made fun of you for it, for not having sons, wouldn't you be all gray by then? And yet the prophet only had a handful of white hairs in his beard. Reason is his dua, his ibadah was so strong that the great harms that would stress you out are blocked off. We get some of the harms, but we block off a lot of it with dua. And that's why you sh if a person calamities are coming down, go to dua. It doesn't have to be dua about the calamities. Any iftiqar, submi submissiveness, impoverishment towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes up to the heavens blocks the dua but blocks that qada somebody once said well is dua answered or does it block the qada from bad, bad things from happening or am i rewarded for it on the day of judgment and one of the scholars gave one of the most beautiful explanations over here he said you made dua for something 100 times and allah answered you the answer actually came to one of those duas the rest 99 are for blocking calamities and for reward on the day of judgment. That's why part of dua that we should be encouraged to do is to do a lot of it. Because if it's answered once, 
all the others are for our life's benefit too. Blocking bad things from happening or being rewarded for it on the day of judgment or wiping out our sins, etc., etc. And that's from the adab of dot that we're going to cover is the repetition of it. We people hate repetition. Someone texts you once, that's enough. They text you a second time, fine. You hit me up a third time asking me for this. I'm going to get annoyed. I'm actually going to withhold it on purpose because you're bothering me. You don't have adab. You don't have basic decency to stop bothering people. That's because we're weak. We can't handle being asked so much. But Allah loves this. And we're the beneficiaries of it. If you like the video that you just watched, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell for notifications. And if you really liked what you just saw, support us at patreon.com slash Safina Society.